Hi, my name is Darnell Barkman. I'm a peace builder from Mindanao and a pastor in Metro Manila at Peace Church Philippines. Since the conflict in Mamasapano on January 25th, the public have been polarized about what's happening in Mindanao. Some people are calling for all-out war against the Bangsamoro, and some people are calling for intensified peace talks. I want to help you understand that there are multiple players and nothing is just as simple as saying we should have all-out war. If you can understand that, then you'll see that there are multiple sectors and multiple layers that need to be addressed for lasting peace in Mindanao. I hope this is helpful for you. Often on the news, when we hear about the conflict in Mindanao, we hear about one of a number of Muslim groups, the MILF, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or the BIFF, the Bangsamoro Freedom Fighter. The opposing group representing the government is the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or the AFP. Now what happens is, when we analyze conflicts in Mindanao especially, we often polarize this conflict. We say that there's Bangsamoro groups, whether it's the BIFF, or the MNLF, or the MILF, versus the government of the Philippines, or the Armed Forces of the Philippines, AFP. And we just think that all of these groups are fighting against each other, and there's just two sides, bipolar. This doesn't really honor the number of players that are involved in the Philippines. The conflict in the Philippines, and Mindanao specifically, is generally thought of as black and white. The Bangsamoro versus the government. If we think this way, we set ourselves up to miss the complexities and the relationships involved in this conflict. So I want to try to give you a different framework as a peace builder to analyze what's happening in Mindanao and better understand the reality on the ground. So we call this a pan cross box analysis. In the conflict in Mindanao, there are multiple players, some who want conflict and some who want to take a specific political side in that conflict and some who don't want conflict, even though they have a political preference. So generally you have the government of the Philippines and you have the Bangsamoro people. If this was all it was, and you just had black and white, or black and white, it would be very simple to decide whose side you wanted to take. You'd either be pro-government, or you'd be pro-Bangsamoro. But the conflict is never that simple. For example, in this drawing, the people above that line are pro-Bangsamoro, and the people below this line are pro-government. On the Bangsamoro side, you have doves. You have NGOs and people who've been working for peace for their whole lives, trying to see peace, sustainable justice and peace, live and be experienced by all people in Mindanao. In the same way, you have hawks. In this case, in Mama Sapano, those hawks are the BIFF. They're the people who are opposing the peace process between the government and the MILF peace panels. On the government side, you also have doves. The government peace panel, the Manila-based or government side NGOs who are working with Bangsamoro NGOs and trying to encourage the peace talks between the MILF peace panel and the government peace panel. Then on the other side, the government, you also have hawks. You have military leaders, private armies, and other players who stand to benefit from the war in Mindanao continuing. On each side, you have these sides fighting each other. You have the MILF peace panel who's working hard among the Bangsamoro nation of 5 million people to see the people swayed towards peace rather than violence. And you have the BIFF trying to rally those same people saying we need to continue to fight for our own uh, self-determination. In the same way in the government, you have the Office of the President um, peace panel who's working hard to see the peace talks go through. 
But those people, again, are fighting up against military leaders who want to fight, who want to continue the war in Mindanao, who want to continue to fight against the Banzamoro people. And these guys in Senate, in government, are fighting for budget. So you see, we have conflicts in both places, even in the same camp. Then in the middle, we have other players who aren't necessarily on one side or the other, but who kind of float back and forth based on their benefit. You have powerful clan families. You have resource-based companies with private militaries or private armies, hired security forces in oil, mining, or agriculture. You have the New People's Army. So there's all kinds of other players in the middle of this conflict who, whether we know about it or not, whether the media understands it or not, they float back and forth and have a major effect on the peace situation in Mindanao. So we have to remember that within this conflict, on both sides, there's hawks who want the fighting to continue, and there's doves who want to collaborate and work for justice and peace. It's never, never just as simple to say you can be pro-government or pro Bangsamoro. But instead, there are multiple players, multiple relationships on both sides, and we need to dig deeper to understand and to at least acknowledge the complexity of this conflict instead of oversimplifying it. I hope that this analysis was helpful for you. My hope is that people will stop reacting and calling for all-out war because the reality is all-out war doesn't benefit either side. For 40 years, there has been conflict in Mindanao and the peace process has gotten as far as it is because people in Mindanao and people in the military are tired of fighting. They're tired of sending their sons and daughters into the battlefield. So we want to work for a sustainable, just peace. As a church, we believe that's our calling, to be communities who have a culture of peace and work on the ground to reconcile Lumads, Bangsamoro people, and Christians. And we hope that you want to join this journey with us as well. So keep tuned at peacechurch.ph on our blog for more comments and more articles about this topic. The number one thing you can do right now to change the conflict in Mindanao is to embrace those that are different than you and learn more about the situation in Mindanao. Make a Muslim friend if you're Christian, and if you're Muslim, try to reach out and make a Christian friend. <laughs>